Hey everybody, this is Martha. Welcome to my Shabby Craft Studio. So some people were asking about the ice dyeing and uh, I appreciate that. And so I am going to set up one pan today for ice dyeing and I have to duck under you. I don't know if this setup is gonna work very well. My lighting is not great. So I have my ice, I have my fixative, which I mixed in a bottle. It's the Rit. I'm using Rit dyes, so I'm using the Rit fixative. Um, it works pretty well. I mean, you still get color out at the end. These pans I bought from Ikea, and they came with a rack. They're roasting pans. They're stainless steel. These are the same pans that we used for marbling and I've used them for eco dyeing. I've used them for a lot of things and they really clean up pretty good. We didn't clean the sides very well. That's, that's what it is. So I have my ice here which I've smashed on the um I have smashed it on the cement floor because you want your ice to be different sizes. Um, so what I've done is these racks that come with the pans are pretty um, wide spaced and especially the ends have really wide spaces. So I have these cheap cake racks from Dollar Tree and let me tell you there's a lot of supplies you can get for doing this from Dollar Tree. Um, if you don't have a pan like this you can use a tray but what you have to make sure of is when the ice melts, um, that water is gonna build up in the bottom of the pan. So it has to be deep enough to catch whatever you're gonna, whatever is gonna drip. How, however much ice you are going to use, it's going to build up in the bottom of this pan. So you could use a foil pan, disposable foil pan. You could use a plastic bin. You could use a round bucket. You can use a Dollar Tree bucket with a Dollar Tree colander and just set the colander in there. Now what you want is you don't want whatever you're using, racks or whatever, a colander, you don't want the bottom to touch the bottom of the bowl. And the reason for that, so make sure your colander can sit over the top of the bowl. The reason for that is because when your ice melts, and your dyes are in the ice, whatever's in the bottom is gonna be probably mud unless you just use one color. And um, you don't want mud <laughs> on the bottom of your fabric. So I have all these dyes here. These are all dyes that I got at Joann's when they were on sale, which is another tip. Um, I have a lot of fabric here. I have some fabric that I'm going to dye over because it's just a bit too pastel. I have flour sack towels, which have been washed and dried. And that's one hint. When you wash and dry your fabric, you do have to wash and dry your fabric. I would not not wash it because when fabric is made, it's full of chemicals. And those chemicals can prohibit the colors from staying in the fabrics. So. Cut your fabric to whatever size you want. These are, I believe, I don't know if this is muslin. I, I keep going back and forth. I think this is a big sheet of muslin because it's got selvage edges on it and not hems. So you can use an old sheet. Um, I have some lace here, but I'm not sure if it's polyester and it might not take the color, but I'm gonna try it. I have some beautiful linen cotton blend that I got at Joann's when it was, um, I had a coupon. Um, but it does go on sale now and then. I have some cheesecloth, which I forgot to cut, and some more cotton. And I bought two more dyes the last time I was at Joann's, but it looks like I had that one. <laughs> the pink already. I couldn't remember what I had at home. So if you buy it, write it down, because it's worth it. Okay, so I only have, um, I'm only going to do a couple of today. A couple of today. A couple today. Um, I'm going to try the linen 
And one thing that you have to remember is when you start doing this, um, you don't want everything to be the same color necessarily. Now, if you only have two or three colors and that's what you want to dye, go for it. But because I only brought the small bag of ice down today, I'm going to just uh, do a few pieces of fabric. So I'm going to the sink and I'm going to wet these, but they're going to be just wet enough that I can wring them out so they're just damp. And the other thing I need to tell you is um, anything that you use, like I would never use these pans for cooking. Once you use something for dyeing, don't ever use it for cooking again. Um, it's just not safe. So you have to have things that you don't want to use for cooking. And I did follow, now these are barely damp, like they're wet, but they're not wringing, you can't wring any water out of them. So I think you can see that. Yes, what I'm doing is, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Sorry, you're swinging because of the arm you're on. Um, what I'm doing is just, I'm going to just let it fall on itself and I'm going to put it over here. And then I'm taking this, oh, that's barely wet. <laughs> I didn't get wet at all. Okay, and this one I'm going to fold. And you can do various things. You can scrunch them, you can tie them with rubber bands like tie-dye, you can fold them, you can layer them. Um, I'm gonna fold this one twice. And what's going to happen is the more layers you have, uh, the bottom layer is going to be lighter than the top layer. So I'm going to do this like this. So the outside layers are kind of there. All right. So I'm only going to put these three on this tray because I don't want to overload it. Now you do need rubber gloves, which I always forget. And you do need a microwave or a really hot day. And I will tell you that I followed the directions from RIT.com. So the RIT dye website um, is where I got my directions from. And this is only the third time I've done this. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. See what comes out. I am no expert. I might put, I'll put those in another one. Okay. And I should have untied this before. <laughs> Close on. And you really should wear a face mask, which I think probably all of us or most of us have. So my hands get cold really easy. These are a pretty heavy rubber glove that I found. And they're nice and long. So I'm a really sloppy cook and a really sloppy dyer. So I'm going to just place this ice on here. Usually Tony helps me. And now this ice is a lot of different sizes because I did smash it. I'll zoom you out again, maybe. All right, so I'm going to put, and the rounder, like if it's too, if your fabric is too uh, built up, the ice won't stay on it. it it's got to be sort of a flat surface. What I do is I just put the ice in the middle and I start spreading. And you don't need like a whole lot of ice. It does take a lot of ice. You know, it depends on the size of your container, but you don't need a really thick layer of it. That's getting, like my fabric is too close to the edge of the pan and my ice wants to fall off. So it would help if I didn't, oh my goodness. Story of my life. This is why I don't like doing videos. I'm not a, I'm not a teacher. I am so not a teacher. So, a little more. And that's also why smaller ice is usually better because you can kind of cram it into the edges and stuff without it falling off. Okay. 
And you know, if you have bare fabric, the dye is just going to fall on it anyway. All right. So that's probably as good as it's going to get. All right. Now, I also can't do this with gloves on. Um, but if you want to use gloves, that's great. All right. So I'm going to do... I'm going to do a little of this teal and hope that the package is in the right way up. It was not. Okay. Now, what I did was I just I just cut a hole in the corner of the packet of dye. Okay. I'm sorry, my air conditioner is running because it's hot as the dickens outside. And so what I do is I just put, you know, my base color that I want around. Don't use a lot of dye. That looks like not enough. Trust me, it's enough. Uh, box. Okay. And then I think I'm going to put a little bit of dark blue. Now this dark blue is really dark blue. So it really does kind of take over the whole thing. So you don't want a lot. You do want to overlap some of your color but you don't want to have it too heavy because really heavy dye, number one, wastes the dye. And number two, it um, comes out way dark, like really, really dark. I did that with the purple. And it came out way too dark. Okay, so I'm gonna put in the dark blue. And then, I'm gonna put a little purple in here. My three favorite colors, teal, blue, and purple. Could put a little green in there, but that might be too much for this one. And then this purple is very dark too, so I'm not gonna put a lot. I'm just gonna drop a few bits here and there. Okay. There we go, that's all the purple I'm putting on. And then it'll take all day for this dye to, um, and you don't wanna to mix too many colors because you know color theory, you'll get mud. And that's why I'm just doing very little. But I have a few blank spots that I really wanna put this little bit of green in. Um, so. It's like if you're not supposed to have sugar and you just want a touch of sugar on something, that's all you're gonna do. Seriously, you just want touches here and there. Oops, that might have been too much. And what's going to happen is this dye actually just melts in layers because it's on the ice that's in layers. Okay, that's enough more. All right, so now basically, I just have to let that sit. And I'll just let it sit until this is melted. I'll come down and check it tonight. If it's not completely melted, I'll check it tomorrow morning. Um, I am going to move this over and I'm going to um, do one more set here because um, I want to over dye. Nope. That already sits too high. I'm going to over dye some of that other fabric that I brought downstairs. It's just too yellow and pastel and pink for me. Put that there. I'm going to wrap these up here. And I don't need to put my gloves on again because I can't stand the ice on my hands. Which really, you should have your gloves on when you're doing the dye as well. And you can cut the tops of these dies off, the packages, oops, and you can, um, 
use a spoon to take the dyes out. And I am going to put the RIT um, website in the description box of this video. So they have a great video. They have a um, written directions, which you can print off. And it's a very easy process. I put it off for years and years and years because I thought, you know, well, to get it to look good, I had to use the Dharma uh, chemical dyes and all that. You don't have to. I love the way this is coming out. So I'm going to put a little blue and sprinkle a little blue around. Whoop. Whoop. That's probably way too much. I don't know if you can see that. See that big blotch of blue? Not good. <laughs> Not good. And I'm going to put some green. Come on. And the, oh, shoot. This is why I don't put a big hole in this. Because, really, honestly, you don't need that much. Okay, that's it. I'm not doing any more. <laughs> no more! Okay, so I'm going to leave those. Um, I'm probably going to go upstairs and get some more ice and do one more batch of fabric in the colander. And then I'll be back with the other steps. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Um, all right, so as you can see, the ice has melted. There's a lot of liquid in the bottom of these pans, and I have to do the next step. So the next step is to spray the fabric with the fixative, put it in plastic wrap, microwave it for two minutes, and then we rinse, 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 rinse. This does use a lot of water. So that's just a forewarning. So um, I am going to set up to do that. And I just wanted you to see what the pans looked like when I was looking at them for the first time after all the ice melted. Okay, this may not be the best camera angle, but it's the best I can come with at the moment. So I have this huge box of plastic wrap that has a cutter on it makes life a whole lot simpler. And then I pull this out and I keep this. Plastic wrap is so fun to play with. Not. Alright. And then what I need to do is what you take your fabric and spread it out. Now this is one of the over dyed ones. It was very yellow and pink yesterday. And I'm going to spread it out. Maybe. I hate wearing gloves. I really hate wearing gloves. I'd rather have black and blue fingers all the time. And then this is the fixative. I mixed up in water. I'm going to spray it really well. Okay. And then I'm going to take this and wrap it up. So I'm going to... Tony is doing things upstairs. I told him I was recording, but I didn't tell me I had to stop stop doing Tony things, so you may hear noises. I tried to get him to take Evan for a walk, but, you know, <laughs> that didn't work. Okay. So I'm going to do this with every piece, and I don't need quite that much plastic wrap. 
I'm sorry if I'm getting in front of the camera with my body. I tried, you know, several different setups. And because of the camera and angles and lighting and everything else, it is what it is. So I hope this works for you. So I'm going to put a lot of fixative on there. And I do like uh, these being over dyed. They're not as pastel. Not that there was anything wrong with the yellow and pink. I just would probably not use it. Um, so, yeah. And the washer is going. <laughs> he doesn't realize that you can hear all that stuff down here. And regardless of the fact I'm recording, you know, Tony's got to get his stuff done. Now, I would only put like two of these in the microwave at a time. And you do set the microwave to two minutes. And I am soaking these with this fixative. And what this is going to do is the heat is going to um, help the fixative keep less of the color from washing out. Not as much color washing out. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera off, finish doing this part of it, and I will just be back. to point out real quick, I am spraying the first pan that I did in the video yesterday, and this is one of the sheets that came out, and I absolutely love it. It's very pale. It shows up brighter on camera, actually, than it actually is, and this will be a really nice sheet to stitch on. Here you can see I have placed two packages in an old microwave that I used for wool dyeing. And I'm going to set it for two minutes. Push start. I don't know how well we'll be able to see, but the packages should expand, the saran wrap should expand. Nope, oh, that doesn't work. See them expanding? So I'm gonna let them go the two minutes and do the rest of the packages and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm struggling with camera angle and everything else, but this is what the packages look like when they come out of the microwave. And so um, they're still warm. I can touch them, but I still have to be very careful opening them because if it's steamy inside, then uh, they'll be, you know, they could burn. So I just find a spot I can rip it open. There we go. And then I'm going to rinse them. And I won't, um, I won't show everything here because the lighting is really bad, and I don't know if I'll be able to correct that. Um, I do some editing, but I, I've not sat myself down and spent time trying to learn. Um, Adobe Premiere editing because, you know, all those editing programs are complicated and they take a long time to learn. So I have some water in this bucket and I know it's really hard to see and I apologize. We have fluorescent lighting down here. So I'm just going to put these two in this bucket and rinse them. And I want to show you as far as the dye running. Now, I used a stronger mix of the fixative this time than I did the first time, and I'm getting a lot less running of the dye. So you just, with experience, you get better at this. You really do. Okay, so that was two pieces, and this is what the water looks like. Hopefully, hopefully you can see a little bit of color in that water. It's not a lot, and trust me, it was more the first couple of times I did this. So I just keep doing that. And I do it in a bucket because doing it in the bucket actually shows me how much water is running out. Whereas just doing it in the sink doesn't always let me know exactly how much water is running out. So, and I use cold water. And I have a towel here to lay the stuff on. And then I will put it on a drying rack when I'm done. 
So I'll be back. Okay, so they are all rinsed. They are hanging on a rack, two racks, <laughs> to dry. And I will turn a fan on them so they will be dry in a few hours. Hi everybody, I am back. So the results of the dyeing, the end of the dyeing, are really better than I expected them to be. And I'm learning that I should not make any judgments when the fabric is wet. <laughs> um, just so you know, and I don't claim this video to be a tutorial or anything. Um, if you remember earlier in the video, I had the over dyed fabric and I know this is the over dyed fabric because there's a lot of yellow and the magenta that I had in it. Um, and I put some green and blue in it, and I absolutely love it. Um, and this is spectacular, in my opinion. <laughs> I really love it. So I'm very happy with this one, and I didn't think I was going to be happy with it when it was still wet. And I have ironed them and everything. So this is just the end of the... This is the results. And I put this green mat down mostly because... Then I'm cutting out the glare on the black tabletop. And yes, there are shadows, but I can't help that because it's a, a quite dreary day and I have to um, have lights on. So there's that one. Um, this is another of the over dyed that had a lot of yellow and pink in it. And I added the blues and the teals so I'm really thrilled with the way these came out um, this one's nice because it still has the bits of yellow in it I like the layered look um, you can literally tell that it's layered colors and I really I, I just am very happy with that <laughs> um, and this is one that is not over dyed this is one that I just dumped the colors on. I love this pattern here. It looks like a flower. Doesn't that look like a flower? Love it. I'm very happy with those. Um, this was not the over dyed. This is a regular one and it's very pale. And you can actually see the lines from the rack. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> So, and it, this was the one that I had folded in half like this and then folded like this. So that side was down on the rack and this side was up. So that was the effect I got. Um, the colors ran through this side, but they're very pale over here, but you can see the effects of the color on the rack. I'm trying to keep them from wrinkling because I spent half an hour ironing this morning and... This is another one, again, a little too purple, and I think I'm gonna over dye this one. I might take this one downstairs and add a little teal, um, maybe uh, a bit of blue, but you can see the, the teal in the corner, and I, I really love, love that color. And then this is the linen, and again, I think I will take this back downstairs, re-wet it, and um, and put a little more of the, maybe I'll put some denim blue on this. I have to be very careful because that denim blue is so dark it'll just take over, but this has the purple and pink in it. And I just think it needs a little, maybe a tad green and a tad blue in it. And I think it'll come out really pretty over dyed. So those two pieces will go down there. And then this, this is perfection in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know what you think, but this is amazing. Okay, so it's folded. This is one of those flower sack towels. So it's folded in half because I just can't, I mean, I'd have to hold the camera way, way above my head in order for you to see it. But this is half of it. Isn't that, I mean, these colors are amazing. <laughs> and then this is the other half. And I just absolutely... I love it. I love it. I'm very happy with this piece. And this piece I will probably cut down. Um, I may even cut it in half this way 
and cut it in half this way. This is it opened up. So yeah, look at look at those colors. Gorgeous, right? I hope this shows up on camera as much as it does in person because honest to goodness, it's really lovely. So zoom in a little bit. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I'm having so much fun with this ice dyeing. And if you have a chance to try it, you really can just get a lot of the supplies from Dollar Tree and like the colander, the aluminum pans, or the plastic buckets, you know, they're all a dollar, at least at our Dollar Tree here in the U.S. So, you know, if, and when you look at it in smaller sections, it's just, it's just so pretty. I just love it. <laughs> and if you fold it like this, you get a look at that smaller section. So yeah, so this is the end of that ice dyeing. And when I over dye these two pieces, the linen and uh, this piece here, when I put more color in here, I love this corner here. Can you, can you see that corner? Isn't that pretty? Yes, it is pretty, very pretty. I'm deciding on whether I wanna over dye this just a little bit, just just add a little something to this, but I might leave it just the way it is. Absolutely love this piece. <laughs> I really like all of them, honest to goodness. So those are all the pieces from this video. And I hope this will inspire you to do a little yourself. Um, Susan, Thank you, Susan, at Suzy Q Makes. She has asked me if I will sell some pieces. Um, I might. Are you interested? Do you think you would want some dyed fabric? Now, I would not use this for clothing. I did use a fixative, and I did, you know, set it. But I don't know that I would use this for anything that has to go in the washer and dryer. Um... So yeah, so that is the dyeing video. I appreciate you joining me. I hope it was worth it to stick it out to the end through my crazy manic um, descriptions of how I did it. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. I love you all. I hope you are well and healthy and happy crafting. And comment below if this video was helpful. Please give me a thumbs up. And I will talk to you all soon. Take care. Hugs to all. Bye.